listening to the 40 Thrive Podcast, the show created for women 40 and beyond, ready to shake things up. And now, your host, Jackie McDougal. Welcome to 40 Thrive. If you're new here, it's nice to meet you. The first thing you want to do is hit that subscribe, follow, or favorite button, depending on where you're listening, so you get episode updates automatically. You never have to search for 40 Thrive again. If you're a regular, cheers, welcome back. I'm super grateful you're here again. In case you didn't know this, every month in 2021, we are doing one live episode with an audience. I call them our 40 Thrive Hive. In this monthly episode, I invite on an expert, and not only do we have a conversation, but we take questions and comments throughout the show. It's really an awesome experience filled with engagement and feedback, and you are absolutely invited to join us for the next one. There's a link in the show notes where you can become a 40 Thrive supporter. It's just three bucks a month and you get to attend these live episodes. And if you want even more, you can become a supporter at the $10 level and you get an additional 40 Thrive happy hour every month. That's a really great way to connect with other women over 40 who might be going through similar experiences and transitions. The next one is coming up on February 26th. So there's still time to join us for that one. Visit 40thrive.com forward slash episode 95 to join us. Okay, before we jump into today's conversation, this episode of 40 Thrive is brought to you by Kendra. If you know me at all, even a little, I do my research before I promote any product or service. That is my personal commitment to you. Kendra is on a mission to help you prepare for, manage, and embrace your body's natural hormone shifts. That's why everything they do is by women for women science-backed, safe and estrogen-free, and tailored to you. You can get 20% off Kendra's products site-wide. The vaginal lotion, when used daily, helps dramatically improve dryness in intimate areas, 20% off. The supplements from the one-a-day core supplement to the energy boost, 20% off. The sleep supplement that will help you get the best sleep ever, I use this one, and it works, 20% off. Head on over to OurKindra.com and use promo code 40Thrive20. That's OurKindra.com and use promo code 40Thrive20. That's F-O-R-T-Y, Thrive, and the number 20. Or you could just go to the show notes at 40Thrive.com forward slash episode 95 and click the link there. You will not be sorry. Okay, today's episode is all about the midlife crisis. Could you or your partner be smack dab in the middle of one? It's possible. What is a midlife crisis? How does it manifest in women versus men? Typically anyway. And more importantly, how do we deal with it? Stacey Kaiser is a successful Southern California-based licensed psychotherapist, author, relationship expert, and media personality. You probably know her from TV. She's been everywhere from major networks to Lifetime to Investigation Discovery, all the morning shows or... Maybe you've read her book, How to Be a Grown-Up, 10 Secret Skills Everyone Needs to Know. Stacy's approach to therapy is direct, honest, and includes her awesome sense of humor, which I have to say is my favorite part. We recently recorded the episode along with our 40 Thrive Hive, where she also answered their questions. I think you'll enjoy this conversation I had, well, we all had, with Stacy Kaiser. Stacy Kaiser, you're here, 40 Thrive Live, welcome. Yay! So I reached out to you via text and I was like, can we talk about the midlife crisis? Because I think right now we're all going through a lot of trauma in our own way. And so I think it's really important to just open up the conversation of this because it's always a punchline, right? A midlife crisis. It's always a punchline and it's like, oh, he has a Corvette or, you know, she's going to yoga or whatever it is. But can you break it down for us? What is a midlife crisis? Well, To me, a midlife crisis is when a person hasn't been getting their needs met or they've had like shifting needs that they aren't meeting. And so they reach midlife and they say to themselves in that transition time, like, I haven't been doing what I want and I need to make a change. And sometimes a midlife crisis is something really small, like I'm going to be more social And other times it's really big, like I want a new husband or a sports car. (laughs) But the crisis really comes, in my opinion, from not addressing your needs in a way that's productive. So it's more like a reactive situation. And that's why it's called a crisis. 
Mm. I call it a midlife transition for the rest of us. Yeah, because I think a lot of us can relate regardless if we're in that crisis mode or not. So many of us can relate to that feeling of waking up and going, when's the last time I actually took care of me? Yes. I mean, I think, first of all, women are socialized to put everyone else first. Yes. We're caregivers, we're lovers, we're nurturers. And so all of that sort of reinforces us doing that. But it goes to that airline thing where they say you have to put your oxygen mask on first before you can take care of someone else. A lot of us tend to not do that. And so when we reach midlife and we say like, oh my gosh, I only have like half of my life left, right? Mm -hmm. Middle of my life, we panic. And then sometimes we get reactive and that's called the crisis. I've had a lot of people come to me who either stay at home or because of this pandemic, because we're all staying home and they just don't feel good and they don't feel right and they're not happy and they're moody and it's sort of coming out of them, but they don't totally understand why. What I think is really interesting about sort of midlife is, you know, we talk about development, we talk about kids and development, like, oh, when you're a teenager, you're supposed to act this way. And when you're a little kid, you're supposed to act this way. But there's actually something that's going on with us developmentally when we hit midlife. Hmm. There is this developmental moment of, oh my gosh, it's halfway done. What am I going to do with my life? Right. And so if we're not able to focus on what we want to do with our lives, right? Because we're busy taking care of kids or we're working or we're just like juggling life and finances and stress and all that other stuff. We're not pausing to say like, what do I need and who am I and what do I want my next chapter to be like? Right. So how does it manifest differently in women versus men? A lot of times I see men going for like a quick fix, something to make themselves feel better right now. Like, you know, the new sports car or taking up some kind of a hobby, like online gambling. I know a bunch of men who hit midlife and suddenly started online gambling. Really? Nowhere. <laughs> right. Whereas women, I think, are looking for a bigger purpose. Like, oh. what is my new purpose? Who do I want to be? How do I want it to be? We're looking for something bigger. And that doesn't mean that we aren't going to suddenly start like playing Mahjong or wanting to go out with our friends. But oftentimes we're looking for something that is longer lasting in our minds. Right. And so we're not necessarily looking for the latest sports car. Right. Like right. some or of the, the latest guys. sports bra. Yeah. <laughs> That's more likely. That, that, okay. Now <laughs> you just opened up a whole new uh, conversation. We could talk for an hour, just sports bra or sports car. So let's talk about how to deal with it. So many of us are home. My husband used to go to work. My kids used to go to school. I know that I'm not alone in this. He now shares an office with me, sits across from me, which, by the way, is how we got started before we were even together. We used to work right. in the same office. Right, right. Universe. Right. So this um, is all your fault. The universe <laughs> wanted you guys to go back to where you once were. Yes, it's totally our fault. Blame the McDougals. So I see him struggling and I see me struggling and we're doing it in such different ways. So let's just tackle first my thrivers here, anyone who's listening to this podcast, how the hell do we deal with some of this during this time? Okay. There's a few things that I think are important. First and foremost, it is that thing that we've already been talking about, which is making sure that you're checking in with your needs. Okay. But the second thing is, so here's what happened to all of us. I think all of us thought this was going to be sort of short at the beginning, at least most Two of weeks. Us. That's what I thought. I thought it would be two <laughs> weeks. And then I thought it was going to be three months. And so we sort of developed coping skills along the way. We were like problem solving as we went into it. And what we need to do instead is step back and take a look at the big picture and say, okay, assuming we're doing this for another three months, six months, eight months, whatever it ends up being, how are we going to do this strategically instead of just like on the fly? Okay. And for people who are sharing an office, sometimes that means that you have some rotating office time where it's like, okay, the office is mine alone from nine to 11 every morning. And then we all, we share it from 11 to whatever. And then you get it from three to five. Right. And so it might be something like that where you're literally trying to compromise and figure out each other's needs. I think the third thing is, and I think you accomplished this really well personally and through this community that you've created 
is really leaning on your support system. Mm. It's about talking and sharing and venting and connecting because this is such an isolating time. And even in the best of relationships, it's stressful to be around the same person all the time. (laughs) And so connecting with others and leaning on your community, even if it's, you know, through online or watching a video like this, or you and I talking right here is really healing and helpful. Oh, okay. I just decided to add one more thing. I thought I only had three things, but this happens to me all the time. Sometimes I, I, I decide I have a fourth. I'm really telling everyone to make an after pandemic bucket list. It's something I also tell people to do when they hit uh, a midlife age. It's about what do I want to do when this is all done? And if we were talking about midlife, it's like, what am I going to do in the second half of my life? Mm -hmm. And to literally make a list. And I don't just mean things like I want to go to the coast of Italy, which could totally be on the list, but it might also be something like I actually want to learn how to cook and not just bake six different kinds of breads like I did in the pandemic. Because <laughs> I don't know about you, I, I was baking bread a lot. And then I got <laughs> sick of bread. But one of my post pandemic bucket list things is to not learn to cook via YouTube or zoom, but to literally like go to a cooking class when I can have one so I can learn some things. And it might also be about like learning another language or committing that you're going to have a girl's night every Thursday with your friends. Mm-hmm. It's about really thinking about what you want to be doing when we're, you know, much freer to do things. And I think kids can do that as well. Right. It's funny because over the weekend, my son needed new slippers and we went and got him some new slippers and then they got to get Wetzel's pretzels. And I was just telling the thrivers here, like that was the most exciting thing I had done in months. <laughs> like if you had told me a year ago, that you will get to go and get your son some slippers and Wetzel's pretzels, like that that will be the highlight of your freaking weekend. (laughs) Never mind year. I mean, that's, that's crazy. (laughs) It's, uh, you know what? It's same, same with me. I went to Target recently and they had all the cleaning products. They had Lysol, they had Clorox wipes, they had Clorox (laughs) spray, and there was no limit. So I was like loading up my cart and I was so excited. And then I was like, this is what it's come to. And I'm texting all my friends going, go to this target. They have everything you can need to clean. And I thought, and I, I literally felt like I was, I don't know, like someone, I won the lottery. <laughs> and you don't um, even recognize yeah. yourself anymore, uh, right? Yes. Our expectations have gotten much smaller, you know, which a lot of people have said what's been good about this is it yeah. brings us back to things that pertain to us. Like when we were kids, like kids are out riding bikes and families are out walking again and you appreciate going to the mall. And so I think that that part's nice, but yes, I think we all need to sort of let ourselves live in our imagination. It releases stress and it also helps you formulate like, what are you going to do when you're free again? Right. So what do we do in the meantime? Because you were just saying like, if it's three months, six months, nine months, and of course, every state and, and also outside, I, we have listeners outside the US in, in many countries. Um, so everybody's a little bit different. But what can we be doing right now to sort of fuel that purpose and what our soul needs? So it is about taking that time to stop and get in touch with like what your needs are. Okay. The other thing that I think is really good is to be out in nature of any type. It doesn't matter if it's snow or sun. And this is a really weird thing that I read during the pandemic that I learned. Water is actually something that's very comforting and healing to people. So you could be in the bath, but you should be like running the tap a little bit. You know, you can drain a little and run a little so that you're watching the water. You can literally like take a pretty bowl and put rocks in it and like spin the water. Like all of that stuff is supposed to be like soothing and relaxing. Mm. When it comes to sort of couples and kids and families, I'm really encouraging everyone to pick their battles. It's a stressful time. People nitpick at each other. We don't want to be doing that. And to also make sure that you're having groupings of time where you're alone and together and in different configurations. So if you had two kids, sometimes it would be like you with one kid. Sometimes it would be you with the other kid. Sometimes it'd be you with both kids. I've even told parents if they have kids that they need to like go on a walk and leave the kids or go in the backyard 
or in the kitchen and have the kids in another room so that people are having opportunities to have like different pairings and time Mm. alone as well. That's such a good point because, you know, I have three teenage boys and they all are dealing in very different ways, but I try sometimes to combat this time by like, come on, let's do a family game or let's go for a walk. And my oldest who already is in a natural space of separating himself is like, do you not get it? It's you that I don't want to be around. And like, (laughs) I mean, he doesn't say it that way, but that's how I take it. (laughs) No, I mean, you know, they're supposed to separate. Yeah. And right. What you're doing in those moments is what we all do, which is you're trying to come up with something for everyone. Yeah. But, but you really, let me fix you all in one, (laughs) with one move. (laughs) Right. But you should really just need, you just really need to come up with something for whoever's interested to be like, we're all playing a game. Anyone who wants to play can. Mm. Okay. It's just the two of us. (laughs) Maybe we're going to watch this instead. I should actually do that because that'll guarantee I get alone time. <laughs> right? Come up with an activity they hate. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to go hiking? You know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So we need to get in touch with what we want, connect with other people and community, make the list. I mean, there's so many classes out there. There are so many things that you can do that maybe weren't available. Even plenty of women in the 40 Thrive community are teaching yoga and coaching and doing things that they weren't necessarily doing. Here's one of my challenges. And let let me rephrase. Here's a challenge I've heard about in the 40 Thrive community that has nothing to do with my actual life. What do you do, (laughs) wink, wink, what do you do when your significant other, your partner is really struggling and feeling disconnected and you want to fix it? You've been together a long time. How do we deal then? What you want to do in that situation is ask your partner what they need. So us natural fixers, we're already trying to offer to do things. And, you know, we're, we're trying to see what we think they need. And what you really want to do is say, you know what, I can just tell that you're not right, or you're not okay, or you're not who you usually are. And so, so saying what the F is wrong with you is not what I should be saying? If that's how the two of you talk to each other, <laughs> But I wouldn't do do that because it it puts a person on the defensive. Yeah. And I want you to be able to offer support. But what I was going to say is if they say no, I actually, I'm good or I'm fine or I don't need anything from you or what I need is to be left alone or don't ask or whatever, then we need to respect that. Mm. Um, And us fixer people are like, are you sure? Are you sure? Well, do you want to talk? Well, I can tell there's something wrong with you. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Like, no, give the person space. And then you can say, look, I am here if there is something that you like want or need, or if there's a way I can help, but I'm not going to, you know, I I won't bother you with it anymore. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good tip. I just know from myself, it's always been easier to tackle my own issues than to support my partner's issues because we just respond to the world very differently. And I think a lot of people are experiencing that right now. There are a lot of memes that are around there where they're like, oh my gosh, is that how my husband works? Or is that how my wife does this? Or my, you know, like, is this really how they move about at work? (laughs) (laughs) Who are you? (laughs) I really think that this has caused us to learn things, some things we didn't want to know. One of my friends said to me, I never realized my husband was so gross. And I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, he picks his nose. He like doesn't get sticky stuff on his hands. He doesn't wash his hands. She's like, suddenly like, don't touch me. You're disgusting. <laughs> We're seeing too much. The curtain has been pulled back too damn far. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh. And some of it is that, you know, you and I are laughing about some of this stuff. Sometimes you just have to laugh. Yes. Honestly. Yes. You're, you're right, because, you know, it sounds like, oh, everything's fine and we're laughing about it, but there are a lot of people struggling. Yeah, and it's a bad time. It really is. I will say, so I've been a therapist for 25 years. I've never been this busy because people are really struggling. And sometimes some new people, some people that I haven't seen in a long time, yeah. what I'm finding is things that were already issues are just getting worse or bothering us more because mm-hmm. of the conditions. And then there's all the just circumstances of financial issues and worrying about your physical well-being and different rules about how to keep safe and arguments about politics. And 
it, it is a very, very, very difficult time. Mm. You're absolutely right. I want to get to some questions if you're cool with that. Yeah. Bring some of the ladies on. If anyone has a question that you want to come on and ask live, just let me know in the chat. I don't want to call on anybody who doesn't want to actually be on the show. While they do that, let's just say someone out there wants to find support, someone like you, can they reach out to you? So people can contact me through my website. If they are not in the state of California, I'm not allowed to see anyone that's not in the state of California unless they have some residents here, but I can help with referrals. What I do tell people wherever you live, there's a couple of things I recommend. First of all, it's great to get referrals from people you know. Mm -hmm. If you're uncomfortable with that, it's also really great to reach out to a medical provider that you like, a doctor, it could even be a pediatrician, dentist, they, a lot of them know therapists, like I mm-hmm. get referrals from doctors, dentists, lawyers. So to talk to other professionals and see if they have somebody. And then also whatever your local college or university has a psychology department, and you can literally email or call the department and ask them for recommendations. And so what you want to try to do is not just like look it up online. However, if you do want to look it up online, make sure that you sort of look at their website and make sure that you agree with their sort of style and that you take a few minutes to get on the phone with whoever it is and talk to them. But yes, anyone can contact me through my website, stacykaiser.com. I'm happy to sort of help navigate and guide you a little bit. Awesome. I will. Whatever um, way I can. I'll put that in the chat and also on the show notes when this podcast goes up. Right. Oh, one more thing that I wanted to add too that I didn't know. I had reached out to uh, a guidance counselor and a lot of schools have resources in place, yes. free Great resources, idea. by the way. Yes. You know, that's, that's one thing that's interesting too, is like a lot of these resources aren't being used. Many of us are like, oh, I don't want to take away someone else's resources, but you're not like, they're not being used. And so reach out to your school and see what's available. That's a great idea. And there's all kinds of like low fee and sliding scale options as well. Right. That people can find. Awesome. Thank you, Stacy. All right. So we have a question. Barb is here. Hi. So meet Stacy. Have at it. <laughs> Hello. Nice to meet you. My question really just has to do with kind of going back to the workforce and thinking about what we want to do after the pandemic. My twins are in third grade. So I'm thinking next year, they'll probably start being able to do some things like walk to school on their own, maybe find some after school stuff. The point that I'm trying to get to is when I want to return to my old life, I'm really not sure whether or not I want to go back to the gig that I left or not go back to work at all or find a whole new chapter two. I have some older sisters and some friends who advise just like, don't do anything. You're good where you are. And when the time is right, you'll find that spark or inspiration. But I also don't want to get to the point where I'm not going to be able to have choices. So I don't know if that's midlife crisis or not, but that's where I'm at. No, but I mean, that is what I call like a transitional dilemma, right? I don't know how much of a crisis you're in. I can't tell. But at the moment, it sounds like a dilemma. Um, So I'm glad that you reached out to other people and that they gave you input. I think that's a really good idea. But it also sounds like the input they're giving you isn't fitting for you. If the answer was, let it go, don't worry about it, (laughs) then you would be doing that right now. So it sounds to me like that's not what you're actually wanting to do. I noticed that you said, go back to my old life. And when you watch this back, you'll see you made a little face like a, I mean, I'm being (laughs) exaggerated, but kind of like a old, old life face. It wasn't a good face. (laughs) I don't want you to think of it as going back to your old life because none of us are going back to our old lives. Life moving forward is going to be different. So what I think would be really good for you is for you to think about what your dreams would be in a new life and maybe write them down. Like if you had a magic wand, what kind of a job would you have? How much money would you make? I mean, realistic magic wand, okay? Not that you're going to like fly to the moon tomorrow for free, but, <laughs> but some kind of a realistic magic wand where you can literally, I, I would take a piece of paper and just start scribbling on it or take your phone and write in the notes, like send yourself an email and start writing. If you could just 
look at all of your capabilities and resources, like legitimate ones that pertain to you and realistic things, what would you do? What would it look like? Mm -hmm. And I think that will help you figure it out. It also sounds like you're kind of a planner. So the weight thing might not work for you. Um, I mean, I'm just looking at the background behind you and it's just like beautiful and organized and like (laughs) even, and you just seem like a structured person or you just have great artistic skills. I'm not sure which. No, all of the above. I I definitely need to plan and need to have organization. So then the next thing I would do is, and I would recommend this to everybody for whatever, you could just think about all the things you want to do. Then I would start to sort of play out scenarios, almost as if you were like picking a school. I had to do this for my kids when I sent in a preschool. There were like three mm-hmm. preschools and I made pro-con lists for each school. Mm-hmm. I would say that I would have you do pro-con lists for each possible track. And that all of that stuff should help you sort it out. Cool. Does that help? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. And yes, yeah, you were totally the whole face. You picked it. You picked it up. <laughs> good I had one of those moments of like this must be what a psychic feels like (laughs) (laughs) thank you I appreciate it thanks Barb for asking the question so Stacy do you think a pro con list would work like for most things that we do I think pro con lists are great they don't always help us make decisions but sometimes when you see on paper the pros and the cons of a scenario it actually helps you rule things out and rule things in so yes, I'm a big advocate for pro con list. Yeah, I love that. Okay, we have another question that's in text, so I'm going to ask it for her. That's what I love about this is because people can ask questions and still be anonymous and some people can come on. It's the best of both worlds. So this is a two-part question. The first part is, how do I figure out what my purpose is since I feel like my only purpose has been mainly being a single mom? Good question. Mm-hmm. First of all, because I, I don't have 10 hours to answer this question, it's complicated. I did write an article a long time ago for Live Happy Magazine. Um, I'm not writing updated articles for them now, but it is still online. I looked for it recently about finding your purpose. So if you just mm-hmm. Google like Stacy Kaiser, Live Happy. They I don't have to do it. that. I will provide them the link. Perfect. <laughs> but some of what I would say here about finding your purpose is, first of all, I think being a mother is a great purpose. And fills a lot of time and also sort of fills the heart and soul, which meets the criteria for a purpose. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I recommend that people go back to what did you do for a purpose before you had kids? How did you find purpose? Was it through charity and giving to others? Was it through building relationships? Was it through doing adventure activities? Was it through sewing? Like, how did you do it in the past? And sometimes you can bring some of those back into your life. And then I also recommend that people think about what is appealing to them now. So much like I sort of said to Barbara about brainstorming about her career, I would say just have a free flow, you know, writing or, or talking with someone else about what do I want to do? What kind of things would give me purpose? When my kids got older, they're both grown. I was an empty nester, but I'm not anymore because of the pandemic. I was like, what do I like doing? And one of the things I realized is I loved, I I used to teach Sunday school a million years ago. Not a lot of people know that about me, little known fact. And I (laughs) love teaching. And I feel like what I'm doing right now is teaching. And when I'm doing counseling, I'm teaching. And so I was like, I think I'm going to try and teach. And and so I started applying for part-time teaching jobs. And now I'm actually teaching future therapists every Monday for like six hours. And I love it. And it is giving me purpose. And so it is a combination of the going back to the past thing that I was mentioning where I used to love to teach, but it's also when I started to say like, what, what do I enjoy? That's one of the things that gives me purpose. I also really like cooking for people and watching people eat my food. I actually enjoy watching people eat my food more than I enjoy eating it myself. Um, But I do like eating. So anyway, that's one of the reasons I was like, I want to start taking cooking classes. So those are the kind of questions you can ask yourself, like what brings you joy and do more of that? Yeah, I love that. We were raised by the people where you got a job and then you, you got a pension or what you stayed for 40 years, you punched the card, slid down the dinosaur, you know, the whole thing. And that's not how the world works anymore. But I do think that there's a little bit of that in us still that when we even talk about purpose, we're like, what am I going to do with the rest of my life versus what is something I might be interested in right now? 
yes, and what do I enjoy and what am I passionate about? Because that will help you find your purpose. That was good. Yeah. Excellent point. <laughs> Thanks. Well, because I, I think it's so overwhelming, right? Because never mind marketing out there that's like purpose and passion and all of these things. And so when you feel like you're not able to just go, oh, this is what it is, you kind of feel like you're, you don't measure up. What's wrong with me? If I can't find my purpose, everybody else seems to be finding their purpose. I think it's dangerous. Yes. Yes. And I think you make a good point too, that a purpose doesn't have to have a big long-term thing. It's about doing something that gives you joy and fuels your passion in the moment. Yeah. You inspired that when you said you teach one day a week. You didn't just get rid of everything else to find this purpose. You know, teaching, you do it one day a week and maybe in a couple of years, that's no longer what you want to do. And that's okay too. Right. Absolutely. Or I might want to do more of it. Who knows? Yeah. Exactly. Um, So the second half of that question was, she has a teenager who has mental health issues. She's a therapist and all that, but how does she help her when she tells this person she's fine when she's not like as a mom, the teenager's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. But you know that they're not. I think I would ask the therapist, if you have a therapist, how to handle that. Mm. That said, what I would say is to say, okay, well, just so you know, it seems like you're struggling to me, or it seems like you're not in the best place that you could be in right now. And if there is a way that I can support you, let me know. But part of what's happening, and you sort of talked about this in reference to your kids, it's just part of the, the you know, natural cycle of everything is that they don't want us to help them. They want to figure out on their own, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I really try to put myself back there many, many years ago. And, you know, 16 my parents weren't the answer to any of my questions. I mean, that sounds terrible, but it's true. And that's like biologically, right? And so because we're stuck, I don't want to say stuck, but sometimes stuck with people that would normally be out living their lives, finding jobs, being with friends, doing things like that. It's really dangerous for us to think that we're going to be the end all be all because then I find as a mom, I will struggle when it feels like, oh, they don't even want to be around me. But if we were in a normal time, of course they don't want to be around me. And they really don't want to be around us now because they're around us all the time. <laughs> right. But, but it is part of development for them to separate. It is part of development for them to lean on other people instead of us and to want to try and figure out things on their own. So those of you parents who remember the time when you would let your kid walk away a little bit just to go get a toy or go to kindergarten or a friend's house without you, this is the same phenomenon. It's like they need to be able to step forward on their own, but know that you're there if they need you. Right. We really have to make that conscious effort to let them step forward when they're stepping just in this next room, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's just it's a shit it's show, Stacy. It's a it, shit show. It, it is. It is. Any parting words, any, um, any gems of advice that will keep us sane for the next however long? This too shall pass. It will end. <laughs> Eventually, there will be a day that we will look back and say, remember when we were in that pandemic? Um, there have been yes. pandemics before. The world has recovered. We will recover now. And so we just need to sustain ourselves as best as possible. And to me, that's about ultimately taking care of yourself, taking care of your families, making sure that you have a good support system and that you find ways to have some fun. Awesome. Now, what do you do for fun these days? I drive for food. So I heard about this really good barbecue place. that was like a 45 minute drive. I drove to pick it up. There's this bakery that I really like. It's like a 45 minute drive. One day I drove to pick that up. So I I drive for food. And that's what my whole family now we say Kaiser's drive for food. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. There's nothing else to do. Stacy, thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening. We keep the conversation going in our free and private Facebook group. So make sure you join us over there. Also, if you have any questions, comments, wishes, hopes, dreams of something you'd like to hear on 40 Thrive, send us an email at hello at 40thrive.com. Until next time, take care and keep thriving. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.